Hi, I'm Dump Truck DS, and welcome back to Mapping for Quake. This is another episode in my Progs Dump series that where we go over the features of my mod Progs Dump or Progs Dump. Anyway, this particular episode is on some of the particle effects. We couldn't cover all of them, but most of the important ones are in this video. That's enough of me jabbering. Let's get on with it. This is a map called PD Counter, and it's called that because we have uh, examples of Funk Counter. We're not gonna cover that right now. We're gonna stick to particles. So here's some particle effects. Now in this map, I'm showing off three different particle effects. So on this side, these three right here in front of me are miscellaneous particle spray. And you can see the difference, uh, there's color differences and then the other differences move direction and you will see that in a few minutes. Now we've got miscellaneous particles. So there are four of these. Uh, same entity but uh, different colors and different move directions again and you can kind of see the difference in that these are a little more erratic they kind of waft around a little bit like there's almost like a breeze hitting it and over here these travel in a pretty linear direction so that's the main one of the main differences between these type of particles we also have a miscellaneous particle stream and this one is triggered so I'm gonna hit the button and I've got a little sound effect playing there. Now you can also have it just continuously stream. And we'll cover this in just a few minutes. So in this map here, we've got a couple of these things. This is, um, I could just tell by looking at this, is miscellaneous particles. And this is also miscellaneous particles. And this is what this was created for, for the um, mod Rubicon 2, which is a great mod. You should play it if you haven't. You know, it was mainly for waterfalls and things like that. So that's why, of, that's why the erratic kind of wafting nature of the particles in this one. So this map is uh, PD Rotate. And this uh, f entity is a funk particle field. And you use a funk particle field, you make a brush shape and these are a bunch of just little shapes here and it's animating across them using a counter. So I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but I did wanna show you since this is the particles video. Um, I'll show this, this is a little bit more complicated, so I'll show you this in another video. All right, so let's take a look at these miscellaneous particle spray in the editor here. So you remember this one was kind of a gold color or a yellowish gold color. Let's take a look at the different key value pairs. So the color in this particular up here is 239. And what that corresponds with is this Quake palette. And I have this in the ma manual and it's pretty clear here. Um, when you choose the color, let's say, where is it, 239, we put it there. So now what will happen is it's going to take a multitude of colors from this row. But you just kind of set this as your base color. This one was more of a green color, so 176. We'll take a look at that, 176, and so on. So that's pretty clear. Now let's look at the move direction. Move DIR is the vector distance that the particles will travel before they disappear. And these are three numbers, it's X, Y, Z. So in this case, I have it going four units in the X direction, basically. This one was going down, and that's because we used a negative number in the Z. So let's take a look at triggering these things. All right, so I've got a little test level here with a miscellaneous particle spray and it's it, there's a trigger multiple right here that the player will go through and then that'll trigger this and let's take a look at some of the key values over here so the move dire uh, move direction is uh, positive six in the z that's self-explanatory the color we've already colored covered that now count this will be the amount of particles it defaults to 15 so i just doubled it with this just so you can see the density they get pretty dense pretty quickly also it has a target name obviously so that you can target it and this is an interesting one duration of five so what that means is once, once you, you trigger this it's going to do the effect for five seconds and then stop now the default uh, particle spray behavior is just to stay on so if you just want something let's say like a you know, a fireplace or some kind of effect like that. You would just not give it a target name and it's gonna be on all the time. You can obviously kill target it if you wanna get rid of it. 
So now I'm going to walk into this trigger. There's the, there's the default one. It's just kind of sitting there with the default color. Uh, there's no uh, target name, so it just plays all the time. But now I've got this triggering here. So you can see it's going to play for five seconds, and then it's going to vanish. Now what this is showing off is in that Z direction, negative Z number. So this would be negative. Sorry, there's a spark sound over here. Anyway, in that negative Z direction, this would be negative nine. And so it goes from zero to nine. So this would be zero, this would be, sorry, this would be zero, zero, zero. This would be zero, zero, negative one, two, negative two, negative three, and so on to negative nine. And then that's the maximum that you have. So that's the maximum direction. And again, you can play with the count so you have more or less particles um, displaying and traveling across the screen. If we made this one, so it's negative nine right now, uh, but if we did the count as one, it's not gonna make one particle. It's gonna make one particle every frame, basically. So as you can see over here, every, every frame, or basically every tenth of a, of a, a second, I think, uh, it's generating these. So that would be a count of one and a negative nine Z direction there. So you can see, you can have little drips of water, that kind of thing, but they can't travel all the way, you can't travel all the way down you know, to the ground, let's say, from that position. These are miscellaneous particle stream. This is miscellaneous particles. And so you can see that um, this one's zero, that's the default behavior. Then that's negative one, negative two, negative three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now this entity works a little differently because it's adding some, um, I don't know, chaos or confusion to the direction, um, randomization basically. So this one's a little harder to control. One key difference between miscellaneous particle spray and miscellaneous particles is the way you select the color. They're basically the same thing, but in miscellaneous particles, you choose the row of the actual color ranges that you want. And with miscellaneous particle spray, you choose the actual palette number. So let's take a look at the miscellaneous particle stream. Now this one is a little more uh, kind of special purpose, you know. So if you recall, I hit the button and it had this multicolored uh, particle effect. So what you do is you target an entity. Now it doesn't have to be a not null. This is an info not null that I'm targeting here. But you can actually target monsters and all kinds of things. So I'll show that in a, in a second. But um, basically give it a target name. I gave it a, I gave it a sound path here. I'm using the Hell Knight attack sound. It's kind of that weird boing sound. There's some weird numbers here. Damage, DMG. That's the first color you want in your stream. So you're not choosing the palette color. Well, you are, you are use, you're choosing palette colors, but you're giving it a range. So you have a first color, like a dominant color, and then um, you can set a second color. So on the, on the one on the left, which is the, the red one, I just chose, I believe it defaulted to the red. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't change it. But that was you know, basically monochromatic. This one I had a, a goofy mix of kind of blues and pinks and different colors. You're targeting the null, and it has a target name for the switch. So now this red one was continuously, and I kind of had a little hack that I discovered. In Prog Stump, we have a funk counter uh, entity, and it. Uh, I'm gonna do a much more in-depth video and it'll probably be a number of videos on the Funk Counter system because there's so much you can do with it. But this is a very simple thing where the, the miscellaneous particle stream is targeting this counter. And this counter is, the spawn flags are set to looping and start on. So now the weight in this case is the length of time between each trigger. The default is one second, but I wanted this every three tenths of a second. So it kind of pulses a little bit. So that's a really easy way to have something like this uh, just loop over and over. All right, so in, this is the PD lasers map. And so I'm gonna turn around this corner and gonna see some uh, cool uh, miscellaneous particle stream effects.
So basically what I did there was I targeted the enemies. So you could do things like, um, you know, uh, have some kind of beam uh, controlling a monster or what have you, uh, because that thing will track along with the monster. All right, so let's let's take a look at these sparks here. So as you can see here, we've got two, I've got two spark entities. One is tied to this light that flashes and it has a sound effect that plays along with it. And then up here, I have just another entity that's just kind of randomly just playing no sound and it's a different color and you chart, you do that with the spawn flags. So let's take a look at how this is set up. So the one that has the sound effect, it is, uh, it has a target and it's targeting, targeting this light and um, spawn flags are sparks pale. There is a built in spark sound effect. So you set sounds to one to enable that. And so then every time it triggers this, this light and triggers the particle effect, it will play that sound. Just a technical note, these are not, they are particles per se, but they're, they're actually, it's actually a model, a little tiny model, spark model that um, comes with the mod um, so that it's, it's not generated by the engine like the other particle system is. So then over here we have spawn flag two, just sparks blue, no sound. Uh, that kind of thing. All right, so the count key is another thing that you might want to deal with. Um, it's the average number of sparks in a burst. So the count is a variance. It's the average number of par sparks in each burst. So uh, the default is 15. And um, to me, that looks fine. But if you need to tweak it, if you want more or less, you can just change the count to whatever number you want. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's make it count 30 so it'll go crazy here. Yeah, it seems like a lot more. As with any particle effect, you probably don't want to go too crazy having way too many particles in at once. You might have some performance issues. That's it for this episode. Make sure and look me up on the Quake Mapping Discord. We have links on my channel and also down in the description below. Uh, I can answer questions about Progs Dump right there. We have a, a dedicated channel for it. So we'll see you on the Quake Mapping Discord. And as always, thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next video.